So our question, Daniel, our high-level strategy question, which is coming from Adam Goulding. In the UK. Hey, Adam. Danielle he says, you once button. commented on your blog about the poor dress sense of the Europeans. Something poor Daniel dress sense. I did. Apparently. <laughs> something about purple shoes and brown socks and shorts. He's quoted I wrote you. that. <laughs> well... <laughs> he says, now we're starting a new season. Do you still think Europeans have shocking fashion traits? Or have no, I think, you know, it depends. You know, on one end of the spectrum, Europeans are, like, amazing, like amazingly fashionable. Then on the other, you, you know, you have some areas where they do the, you know, green shoe, brown <laughs> socks, and, like, purple shorts with a fanny pack. You know, and that's <laughs> probably not, you know, considered high fashion. But I don't know. What am I? I'm not a fashion expert. I'm a poker player. What do I know? I can't believe I said that. Did I really? I usually well, remember what I write. He's Weird. put it in quotes. Okay. Well, we've got two, two of our big, big chips house going at it here. Mercier's opened this pot, and uh, Rizembo's come over the top from the big blind. He made 103,000. You know what? Why not 102? <laughs> really? 103 for the exact perfect amount. I don't total. think so. <laughs> Jason's going to go ahead and pass. Sebastian Mercier obviously the stealing. Gives up pretty quick. Well, again, and if the raise was 280 and was all in, then of course Mercier would call. But because of the fact that there's some play after the flop, both players have a lot of chips, then he can fold if he was on the steal. Which I suspect um, Mercier, understanding now that the line's so high, is going to go after the steals. Uh, if everyone, at, everyone at the table needs to realize that, though, and they need to start playing back. Everyone needs to play. Right. Well, we'll see who makes that adjustment. There's the uh, chip count as it stands. Sebastian uh, adding to his stack. 1.6 million he has. And uh, he's managed that stack risk-free in this final table uh, pretty much. You know, if I was Katai or Mazzi right now, right, I would say there's nothing wrong with just putting pedal to the metal and just going maniac. I mean, just go totally nuts and really just push, push, push. Go after the blinds and annies. You know, if you get all in, you just get lucky one hand, your chip leader. And again... You're not a cinch to get called. There's only seven players at the table. If you move all in and there's only three players to act, the chances are they're probably going to fold. Yeah. When they do, you make 100. You do it the next 10, you make another 100. That's just so much more important now than really trying to, like, bide your time and wait for good cards. It's really just decision time. Do I want to win this thing or do I want to inch up the ladder? Is that a mistake you see a lot on big final tables? People just well, perhaps it's, waiting it's, too long or perhaps not realizing. It depends. You know, again, it depends on the structure. And as I said, the way that things have developed here with the really long night, uh, right now, stealing blinds and annies is the way to make chips. It is yeah. the only real sort of skill, if you will, that, that you have uh, at your, in your repertoire. And one of the great things about being on the short stack, especially if you don't really care so much about moving up to fourth or fifth, is that you can go for it. You were the one guy in last place that can say, you know what? I have nothing to lose. I'm in last anyway. Everyone else has to wait for cards to call me. And they're all moving up. They're That's all like, a really, really ah, you good know way what? to put I've got a right. million. I don't want to risk my chips. I don't want to gamble. So while they all wait, all of a sudden you go from wherever you're at, 485, you pick up four of them, and all of a sudden you doubled up, and you didn't even get called. I think that's a really good way to put it, a really kind of sort of slightly counterintuitive way to when you're actually sitting there with the short stack. But you're right. What if you got locked up at the moment? You've got six locked up. That's all. So it can't get worse. Absolutely. And you know what? You're In a sense, the short stack is the deadliest weapon at the table, if you will. Because, you know, again, the short stack doesn't have a lot of decisions. The short stack gets clean seven of spades, all in, whatever. You know, yeah. if they get the yeah. players that have maybe a hand like king, queen, they'll fold. Player with like ace four, they're going to fold. Other hands like that. And if a hand like ace ten calls, big deal. You're not dead, you know. Uh, you're, you're only whatever, 60, 40, or even less than that to win the pot. So really, you know, it comes down to a decision. Are you willing to take those risks? Are you willing to put it into high gear and go all the way for the win? Some great uh, tournament tips from Daniel Negreanu. We appreciate that, Daniel. I hope you guys at home. <laughs> hope you guys at home aren't feeling like chickens. Um, we've got a really great offer for you. Our tournament uh, promo today there on screen. Just $22 uh, if you're watching the CPT Live uh, program. And you could win yourself a $14,600 CPT London ticket. $14,600. Is that like the buy-in is 1000 and thirteen six for the room in London? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Room and breakfast. <laughs> go ahead. Sorry. It's all right. Just go to Tawny Private, and the password for you is Corin2006. I would take advantage of that, guys. Uh, yesterday, there was quite a bit of overlay in this tournament. No, I'm just saying the rooms are ridiculous, dude. Oh, yeah. It's you, like insane. And if you pay that kind of money, you expect a really pimp room. We don't have pimp It's rooms. not a pimp room. <laughs> it's a freaking room with a TV that's just too small with four channels. Come on, Only about man. $600 a night. What's your problem? What? More than that. It cost me 800 pounds. Or no, what was it? 400 pounds, which is like a million American or something. And um, 
I was just so disappointed in that it was just there was no there was no there was no dresser to put clothes in. Yeah, How but is that possible? Yeah, but look at the history. Yeah. <laughs> we also got a live free roll uh, for you in which you can uh, win a share of $500 prize pool. And that's completely free. Listening to me has finally paid off. Uh, Tawny Private and uh, Key in the Password, S-T-E-B-I-C, 2004. And uh, we're almost out of Daniel Negreanu time, I'm afraid. No tears, because uh, he's going to be replaced by Chad Brown. Great I will be himself. headed online. I'm actually getting ready to play the W Coop 25K. I'm excited about it. Starts in at, at actually, you know, what is it? Two hours, I think. Um, yeah, and that's a really big event. Yeah, right. It actually starts in two hours. I'm looking forward to it. I think we'll have Daniel's 64 gonna players. Raise, he's going to make it 103,000. Over a million in the prize pool. Oh, we wish you good luck with that. Oh yeah, I'm going to win it. I think maybe if I get lucky. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to go ahead and pass. Yeah. Well, I had some practice this week, as I mentioned. I played the, the other now. heads up, and I won my first four matches and, and lost in the uh, yeah, in my fifth. But uh, felt really good about it. Of course, the caliber play was a three hundred dollar buy, -in, and it's going to be different than what you see in a twenty five k. Yeah, a uh, lot different sort of approach for me, and I'm looking forward to it. Just can't wait to see who I draw first. And he's going to go Daniel, thanks pass. so much Daniel for uh, spending some time with us and giving us some Peace really, out, really good stuff. All right. Speak to you soon. Chad Brown taking over. And uh, while Chad gets himself in position, we'll see uh, Daniele Mazzia take down a pot. He's one of our shorter stacks, finds himself in fifth place at the moment. And uh, any time he can do that, as Daniel was saying, makes a huge difference to his stack. Uh, he's picked up 100,000, taking him up to 770,000 in chips. Moving him up a notch on the totem pole as well. He's in fourth. And uh, if you have to see that. Chad Brown joining me. Get your questions in for him, guys. Uh, right, nuts Daniel, at eptlive.com. He'll be happy to answer them, won't you? How you doing? I'm doing good. Nick. Chad. Nice to meet you. What do you make of this final table, Chad? Have you seen any of the action? Uh, you know, no, I haven't really because... Um, after getting knocked out yesterday, uh, of course, the W Coops were going on, and uh, I played in the, the pot limit hold'em W Coop and uh, got knocked out 20th in that, so I played till early in the morning. Wow. <laughs> so, just got up a little while ago. How frustrating do you find it when you have deep runs in tournaments and then get knocked out in the kind of in the money but not in the big money? Right. Well, you know, uh, when you get as close as I got yesterday, the finish line, you can see it, and uh, your goal is obviously to if not pass the finish line in first. At least, you know, come in the top three. Um, all you can really do is uh, just say, hey, you know what? If I feel I played well and I played the best that Stephen's I could, gonna start us off under the, gun. the rest was out of my control, and um, I'm ready for the next tournament because obviously uh, I feel I played extremely well to get that deep. So right. you're actually looking forward to the next tournament, which happened to have been just a few hours later, and actually I did extremely well in that coming in uh, 20th out of uh, like 2,000. <laughs> Um, we had uh, Vanessa as a guest yesterday, and she was saying that you're phenomenally good at dealing with disappointment in tournaments, dealing with bad beats, that kind of thing. Not all of us are that good, Chad. I include myself, <laughs> and probably quite a lot of people listening. Give us some advice about uh, dealing with. Let's see, Jason Messi has got a decision here. Daniel yep. Katai's short stacks moved in for 400,000. Ten times a big blind. Looks pass. like he's going to get it through Jason Mercier. What an incredible uh, young player uh, seven, four, Jason is. Away. I mean, uh, right. possibly going to make EPT history here. Uh, he's a very talented player, and uh, ha he's someone who has a lot of uh, discipline, which uh, to be successful, you just can't just have the creative skills. You also have to have the self-discipline to be able to uh, take some bad beats and fold when you know you beat. Right. So uh, my only question about handling disappointment when you get knocked out of tournaments, is that part of it, just understanding that it comes with the territory? Yeah, well, you know, one, the, one of the ways that I handle it for myself is I go into a year, okay, I'm starting the new year, and there's going to be X amount of tournaments throughout the whole year that I'm going to play, and let's All right, Sebastian's gonna start poker us off this time. right up the get-go is about understanding math. Right. Making decisions at the po poker table is about math. Well, you also have to understand the math for emotional stability. And what I mean by that is tournament poker is a profession and a sport of failure, just like baseball is as a hitter. 
your phone will yeah, 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 succeed, basically, even if you're one right, of the like, top players. Right, right like if you're a four